Colorcrow sent me this all-in-one starter kit for Pico 2, and I accept it because I think it's a really cool concept. So what it is, is a very small briefcase. It looks a lot bigger online. And when you open it, it has pretty much all you need to start learning the Pi Pico 2. So you've got some servo horns, you've got a USB type C connector, you've got a remote control, and then you've got the device itself. Now, what's really good about this is that you get kind of a good selection of pretty much all the sensors and lights and stuff you'd want when you're getting started with this thing. And I'm going to zoom you in a little bit closer to show you why this thing excels. So this part is greatly appreciated. If you can see, every component is in a little box, so you know that these labels belong to that component and all the support components as well. But then they tell you which GPIO each component is connected to, which is really good. So here you see we've got a buzzer, vibration motor, servo motor, we've got a linear potentiometer, we've got a couple LEDs uh, on transistor drivers, we've got a keypad, touch sensor, uh, IR sensor. Over here, we've got a relay, we've got a light sensor, we've got hall sensor, gas sensor, sound. Um, this is an environmental sensor, temperature, humidity, like a DHT22 or something like that. We've got a gyro and accelerometer, so you can move this whole box, a DHT22 type sensor. We've got the ultrasonic for distance, and then we've got a big old LCD, which is very nice to see, again with the address written on it. And then we've got a whole bunch of these NeoPixel style LEDs, WS28112s or whatever. And here is your Raspberry Pi Pico 2. So everything is nice and compact all in one area and everything is connected. You don't have to deal with breadboard jumpers. So let's plug this thing in and see what it looks like. So let's get this plugged in here. And this is the default program that comes from the factory. There we go. See, it starts up. Uh, something I did forget to mention in the intro is this is actually a touch screen. So not only is it a, a good LCD display, but it has touch as well. I believe it's the similar to the one on the cheap yellow display. Um, so right now, let's just hit their style. And then there we go. It's got some NeoPixel action. Change that style there. And that style there. And it has scroll. Style 4. There we go. So that's pretty neat. Uh, then it says course learning. You need to use the course. Please flash the course firmware. We'll get to that in a moment. And then there's a mini game. Um, this is a little bit disappointing, this um, demo sketch. I think if I were them, I would have a demo sketch that used all of the controls here, all of the stuff. You know, you, you can make some stuff work when you just plug it in, but that's not the case. So let's, let's try these mini, mini games here. Little Dinosaur. Okay, so here he's running. It's running very slowly. And then to jump, you click, and oh, look, I died. Let's try again. So run and jump. There we go. You got to wait really long time. And it's supposed to speed up and get harder. So that's that. And then we can reset it to get back. And then to the mini games and bouncing ball. And then this is, I believe, yeah, this one's controlled with these keys. But again, look how slow it is running. I don't even know if you can see that red pixel going around. The collision's not very great. We'll reset that. And we're going to try snake for eating. Um, this one to me, oh, there we go. This one to me is very difficult because it doesn't respond quickly to your key presses. You know, I, I understand. Oh, see, that said didn't respond. So I understand that this is not, you know, easy to program and this costs some real developer time to do, but I would have liked better demos and in, instead of games. I would have preferred that they have, um, you know, switches 
and stuff or, you know, indicators that light up when you hit these buttons to make sure they work, that you have some sort of way to activate every device that needs to be activated, you know, some sort of gradient or something that, you know, you can move with a potentiometer. It's not quite there in terms of support, but the hardware is awesome. And before we take a look at the course that this comes with, um, let's take it apart because I have not taken it apart yet. Oh, this one's loose. It's interesting. I want to see what it looks like on the bottom side. I don't expect there to be much because the pie is right here in the middle. Oh, am I missing a screw? Nope, there we go. Comes out and flips around. Okay, that's an, e ooh, that's an interesting way to mount it. So first and foremost, we've got some acrylic pieces with some standoffs, uh, double-sided tape to the bottom. So that's there. We've got a pass-through uh, USB type C, but that looks kind of like a custom jobby. And then we've got a connector. Should be able to remove that. There we go. And then here is the board. So very interesting. Here you've got another connector here for the servo. So I guess you can connect a four-wire servo, or they could connect a four-wire servo. But that means you can probably solder to this and, uh, you know, take out your own servo. Servo wiring is neatly tucked in there, which is pretty good. Got your TFT panel with the support resistors. And that's about it. Oh, and we've got a little um, micro on the backside of the RP2350. So not much to see here. Um, very interesting that they chose this style of mounting. I wonder how strong that would be in shock loads. Now, obviously, you're not going off-roading with this thing specifically, but if you're buying like a hundred of these for a, um, let, let's say, a college class to introduce people to uh, electronics and programming, some of them may arrive dislodged right? Shipping is kind of vicious, um, at least in this part of the world. But I do like the concept of having it all in a hard box. You're not going to damage any of these things. And obviously, the uh, circuit board being one piece is also kind of pricey, right? If I were to do this, I would make it in modules, which would make it less tough, but cheaper. They chose to make it tougher and slightly more expensive. Interesting. Let's go check out that course now. Scanning the QR code brings you directly here, which is Elcro's general website. I really wish they would uh, bring you right to where the course is. I mean, a QR code costs nothing to implement. But uh, here is the kit. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to go find where the lessons are. So we're going to scroll down. Uh, reviewers feedback. That's not what we want. The difference on a blog post. That's not what we want. Just making sure I don't miss any little bit of clickable links here keep going none of these are clickable keep going keep going oh user manual i wish they would just directly link to this and so here again there's the same qr code elecro.com uh, and they have it's actually fairly well written I've been looking through this and here, yes, this is how to install all the Arduino stuff, which is a little bit obtuse. Uh, Arduino really needs to update their software to just do it all, you know, all in one. Uh, but here is the source code address. So we're going to click that. And that brings us to a GitHub. In my opinion, if you are beginner focused, this shouldn't be on GitHub. This should really be on your own website. I mean, it's clear you have your own website. And like, I don't want to brag or anything, but if you look at my website, I am not a company. I make barely any money from this. And look, I just have my code right there. 
you can copy and paste it. It's super simple. You don't have to go to GitHub. So let's figure out how to do this. You go example. Or do we know code? Yeah, here are the lessons. Okay, great. And so you've got this. And then you, I guess you can just copy and paste that. So that's pretty good. We're going to go down here. So it shows you the default programming. And then here we go. So here's the lessons. So they're going to teach you how to control LEDs. And I'm going to link this down in the description. You can go read through it. But this is where I have a little bit of a problem. Um, here is the way that they code. And this is valid Arduino C code. However, I had to ask AI if it was like Arduino C or if it was like C++. And the reason for that is this is not written out in readable English like Arduino C typically is. So I've been coding Arduino for the best part of nine years now. And I don't recognize this. Like, I recognize this. I don't recognize this. They use those operands, I think they're called. And sure, it makes the code smaller, but I don't think it makes it readable. So here is the explanation, which I like. Um, but you see, like, I, I don't think this is written very well. I think this is a bit obtuse to follow for a beginner. I would really like to see them remove the whole Arduino situation and just use MicroPython because you know that the RP2350 is perfectly capable of MicroPython and I think MicroPython is a little bit more beginner friendly and so I think I would rather them do MicroPython. I mean let's go down and get some piece of code that's a little bit more complicated and I'll show you what I mean and so here's the display like this is not easy to read, for example. And then you have to add more libraries. I think I'd really have, I'd really like this to be more all in one because this is a bit much to follow. So I'm going to pick one of these at random and I'm going to upload it to the board and I'll give you my feedback on the whole process. Okay, I got this all programmed up, but first I need to uh, share a little bit of a gripe. So I chose a project at random. I chose an environmental sensor thing. I thought it would be really cool to see the lights and the screen and the temperature and humidity sensor. However, um, they have you go to a third-party piece of software called Squareline Studio and sign up for their services. And they say, you know, just use their 30-day free trial. But I don't think that's a good idea to link your product, your course, to a piece of software that someone else controls. I don't think that's a good idea. So anyways, I picked a different uh, project. And so here, let me just plug it in. We'll see if it works. And the uploading process was not fantastic. I had to download their libraries and then transfer it into the libraries folder and, and then copy paste from the GitHub. It, it was not a great experience, but either way, uh, this piece of software looks great. Look at that. So you have the three LEDs changing in brightness with the potentiometer, and you've got the display on the LCD. And so that part of it is great. But I would say that I've got a couple of gripes, right? So grabbing random libraries off of GitHub uh, and especially because it's not really explained that you can just get it, get the library off their website. It says go to the GitHub. And then those libraries are just not searchable in the Arduino IDE. Not a big fan of that kind of stuff. And the third-party software, I would say, is a complete non-starter. I think the hardware of this device is incredible. I think this is great having everything that you would want to learn as a beginner available right here connected well written well documented everything is perfect i think their course needs a lot of work so i would say if you are interested in learning to code you should buy yourself one of these but you should not use their course i would do a micro python based learning system and I would look up each individual component that interests you, starting with, you know, your most interested to your least, and then 
you know, learn on your own how to, you know, control LEDs with MicroPython. Um, in the documentation, they make you, you know, select a Adafruit Feather HSTX or something like that. I think this is just an RP2350. I think you could just use generic code, uh, and I believe that the pins will all line up. So I would say, in terms of hardware, this is worth it. This is worth buying in terms of hardware. You can just stow this away when you're not using it. You can plug it in and code when you're ready and everything like that works. I would say that their course though leaves much to be desired. And I would just focus on the fact that this is incredibly nice hardware. So I can see a high school teacher ordering, you know, 40 of these at a time or 50 of these, whatever the class sizes are now. And I think with a little bit of pre-prepared MicroPython code, maybe even with help from AI, if you're a teacher, you know, you're underpaid. I think this would make a fantastic learning to code piece of hardware. Thanks for watching. So super limited edition. Um, I didn't get it autographed, but look at that. I got a basement electronics hat. I uh, met up with uh, uh, Curtis in the chat there last weekend. And he gave me a hat. What a nice guy. Let's see if I can find the motors. No. If the motors are here, then they're mine. So yeah. I just thought when I got home, I was like, shit, I should have just asked him to sign it and put it up on the wall. Um, Basement Electronics is the second, second YouTuber. I was going to say first, but second YouTuber I meet up with. Uh, Gabe from Save It For Parts is my first one. Great guy.